Welcome to our webinar, A Simple Business Forecasting Process for Entrepreneurs. My name is Matt Gersper. I'd like to start off with a quote from one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite books, uh, Dr. Wayne W. Dyer and his book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. And he says this, the less you focus on making a profit, Instead, shifting your energy to living your purpose in harmony with everyone else, the more money will flow to you and the more opportunities of generosity will be available to you. That got me really thinking about business forecasting. And, and of course, we're all in business to make a living and to make money. But... I think what he's telling us is it's more important that we stay focused on the purpose of our business, which is serving people and helping them improve in their lives or in their businesses. This is our agenda for today. And let me first introduce myself a little bit to you. I'm the founder of a company called Happy Living. I've had a long time belief that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. And when I launched Happy Living about two years ago, I, I made a switch, uh, like Dr. Dyer talked about, to dedicating my professional time and my resources to developing best practices for health and happiness. Our company, Happy Living, is on a mission to improve the health and well being of the world one person at a time. We have a team of happy living experts that are searching for, experimenting with, and sharing ideas, experiences, and best practices for people wanting to improve their health and well being. In my leisure time, I love to hike and paddleboard, laugh, read, think, and spend time with my wife and children at our lake, at our lake house on Lake Norma. For business experience, I've had more than 30 years of executive experience in the business world. I've been responsible for starting, growing, and leading successful businesses, including roles as vice president of strategic auditing, the founding entre entrepreneur of a startup company, uh, been president and chairman of the board. And from 2004 through 2014, I was instrumental in helping turn a $2.2 million investment into a $42 million return. Most importantly for you, I love forecasting. Really, I, I do love it. And I hope what I put here together today for you is a system that you can use and that you'll end up like loving forecasting too. So why do entrepreneurs need a business forecast? Number one, having a reliable, dependable forecast can breathe life, excitement, and staying power into a struggling business when it needs it the most. Let me just share a story with you. In my previous business, uh, I had an investor that made a great return on investment when we sold the company in 2014. My previous business was more traditional. It was selling software and services to large multinational firms. It was a business to business sort of transaction. And this investor was very comfortable in that world. And he could easily understand the value that we provided to our clients. And more importantly, he understood how we made money. When I subsequently launched Happy Living, he began having serious doubts and was really having second thoughts about remaining invested with me. He just couldn't understand how we'd make money. And frankly, I didn't know how we were going to make money either. So I certainly didn't have the ability to explain it to him. That is until I created a business forecast that is the model for this system I'm going to show you today. It took me a few years to understand the assets that we had and that we could create at Happy Living. It took me some time to discover the facts and trends of our new venture. I had to learn what metrics would drive our success as a company. But once we pulled all these together in a well-thought-out, coherent, an explainable business forecast, suddenly my investor was all in. He understood how we could make money and he was excited to remain invested. Another reason 
for a development business forecast is it's a critical financial component of a business plan that should include also your vision, your mission, your strategy, an organizational chart, and then, of course, the financial plan, which would be forecasted revenues, expenses, and profits. A business forecast is also inspirational during the very difficult early days of a startup. Just listen to these figures. My plan at Happy Living forecast $2,388 in total revenue for 2016. That's it, $2,388. Most people would say I have a hobby, not a business. But I know that if we hit our metrics, we're on our way to 15,000 in revenue in 2017, then 74,000 in 2018, and over $250,000 in revenue by 2019. That knowledge keeps me going through the hard times and the challenging days. And finally, a business forecast keeps you focused on the most important aspects of your work. In my case, in our case at Happy Living, Nothing is more important to our success than growing our social media community and expanding our content library with blog posts, books, and talks. And at some point in the future, we'll be adding products such as t-shirts and coffee mugs featuring our brand names, Happy Living, Inspiration into Action, and the Belief Roadmap. So let's get started with the power of exponents. And you can think of revenue exponents as the, the critical aspects of your business, the things that create value for you and your stakeholders. And value may be more than just financial value. It could be charitable or any other characteristic or trait that's important to your business. So to help you think about revenue exponents for your business, here are the four revenue exponents of happy living. The first is community size. This is important because every new member is a potential customer for every book title and format that we have. Back to the very first book, the very first format, and far into the future. Our second revenue exponent are the book titles themselves. Every new title that we create is a potential sale to every community member, right back to the very first member through the last person to join us. Book formats are also a revenue exponent for happy living because every time we create a new format from a paperback to an ebook to an audio book to a Spanish translated book, every new format is a potential new sale to every community member back to the first member and right through to the last person to join today. And then website products. Every new website product that we create is a potential news sale to every community member, again, back to the very first member and right on through to the last. So that's our focus on revenue exponents at Happy Living. Now let's look at how those revenue exponents um, impact the opportunity for new sales opportunities in a beautiful way. So on the top of the screen here, we're looking at just a model business. And you can see the numbers, the community size is small, it's 10 to start. Uh, the book titles are one, the book formats are one, and in year one, the web products are one. So that means that we have a total of 20 sales opportunities in year one. 10 book titles, only in one format, and 10 website sales. If everybody bought everything that we had, we'd have 20 sales opportunities. Now look, if we just if we double our revenue exponents each year, and we go from 10 to 20 to 40 to 80 to 160 in community size. And you can see the associated growth in, in the other three components, exponents rather. And look what happens to our total sales opportunities. They start growing at a very, very exciting rate from 20 to 120 to 800 to over 5,000 to over 43,000. And the new sales opportunities that is a member that hasn't seen a buying opportunity. Those new sales opportunities are also, also growing very, very rapidly. On the bottom of the page here 
I've put in Happy Living's uh, basic starting point. So this year, we're expecting to end the year with a little over 3,000 people in our community with two book titles and two different formats. So that means that we have a grand total of almost 13,000 sales opportunities if everybody bought everything that we had. And as we grow our community size, um, according to the growth rates that you see there, and I'll, I'll get into the details of those in a minute, and the other components, you can see what happens to our sales opportunities. They grow from 12,000 to 172,000 next year, 662,000 in 2018, over 2 million in 2019, and over 5.5 million new or total sales opportunities by the year 2020. From 12,000 to 5.7 million. So let's look at putting those numbers into a very simple forecast for happy living and see what happens to our revenue opportunities. So you can see at the top, we have our titles growing two per year. Uh, I think that's going to be easily doable for us. The formats in year one, um, we're looking to have our books uh, done only in, in ebook and paperback. In year two, we're going to be adding audio for all the books and Spanish translation for one of the books. And then in year three, four, and five, we're planning to have all four formats for all of our books. Our community size uh, is growing at a diminishing rate. And I put in the, the rate of growth to be uh, 3x in, in the first year and then diminishing to 2.9x, 2.7, 2.5, and 2.3. And you can see our community growth would grow from uh, 2 million or 2,000 to over 100,000 people by in five years' time. The buying rate is the rate at which our members are buying each of our products. So our year one forecast is 3.99%. And what we're forecasting is that we're going to get 5% better at turning community members into purchasers each year. Our annual sales per format in, in year one, that's based on uh, actual sales for the year, uh, and then the size of the community and the buying rate. And you can see that annual sales per format would grow from 86 to 266 to 767, over 2,000 and over 5,000. The unit profit per format, we actually are performing at about five bucks, a $5.61 per book uh, in our first year, but we're forecasting that that's going to drop to about $3 a book. Uh, and then you can see the revenue. So the revenue looks hobby-like in the first year, a little less than 2000 according to this chart, and then 10000 55000 197000 and 610000 That gets me pretty excited. Not for year one, but for year five. And the thing is, as I'll show you as we move on to the next stage here, we can start to track the metrics. And if we're hitting our metrics each year, then we know we're going to be driving the business that's on our, on our forecast. And if we're not hitting our metrics, then we can start to adjust what we're doing every day to focus on those most important things that can drive the most important metrics that lead to the success that we're trying to drive for our business. So the next thing to talk about is the assets. And when you think about assets, you need to think about what do you own or what can you create that you would own that can be, that can be used to generate revenues. And again, to help you think about your own business, uh, for happy living, our um, assets are the website, we're looking to, right now, our website is available for free, but we're looking to uh, create a subscription model uh, for our website. So we'd have a free and a paid uh, subscription. Uh, our books and titles and formats, every time we, we create a new book, whether I write it or we publish another author, we're creating an asset. And every time we take a title and we expand it into another format, we're creating another asset. We're looking to develop affiliate programs. 
whereby people, um, other companies bring us members in our community and we can create uh, uh, revenue sharing opportunities through affiliate programs. We're also looking to generate some revenues through talks and webinars. And then uh, finally, and I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this yet, but we have some trademarks on uh, some of our assets, Inspiration into Action and the Belief Roadmap. And we're looking at developing some licensing opportunities that could create revenues for us in the future. So the first four, or there are three of these five um, assets, the website, book titles and formats, and talks and webinars are uh, part of our business plan. And the affiliate program is part of our business plan only as so much as uh, we'll be looking at creating advertising revenue through an Amazon affiliate. Um, the partnership programs are not currently a part of my business plan, nor are the trademarks and licensing. Okay, let me have a discussion with you here about facts and trends. And to do that, I'm going to open up spreadsheet and talk about facts and trends of our business from this from this screen. Okay, so what we wanted to do in terms of understanding where our business can go is document where our business has been. So the first thing we'll talk about is social media size. So when we started our company, we had social media uh, of zero. And in our first half year in business, we ended up the year with 392 members on our happy living uh, uh, social community with our, with our email list, our Twitter and Facebook uh, lists. And so we had a total of 392 people paying attention to and playing with us at happy living. By the end of 2015, that number had grown to a little over a thousand. So that's a 2.7 X increase. And our social community size as of July 28th was about 1,960 members. And so then I can start to do a forecast for where I'm expecting to end the year. Uh, but I'll get into the green forecasting numbers here in a minute. Uh, so the gray, gray uh, cells are things that we know. 392 in year one, 1,083 in year two. Other things we know, we wrote and published two books uh, from July 15th through April 16th. Um, we also know that we sold 198 books from January 14th to July 28th. And we did that at an average profit of about $5.02. Uh, it used to be 561, that number has dropped to 502 as, with another month of data. We also know that we created a whopping um, $62 in advertising revenue, affiliate revenue in 2015. And we had 163,000, 163, I can't help myself, $163 in affiliate revenue as of Jan July 28th of 2016, and $240 in speaking revenue as of July 28th. So those are the facts and trends that we knew about happy living and could document and make a part of our business plan. So for your purposes, that's what you want to do is look backwards and, and anything that you can see that you're that is trending, whether it's up or down, uh, if it's an important aspect of your business, then you want to start to to track those trends. And that would be an important part of getting your business plan put together. The next thing to talk about is what are the metrics that are important in your business? And so again, let me work from, from this spreadsheet and talk about metrics that we're trying to, to track and to achieve. The first is what I call our social media community growth factor. So as I mentioned before, our growth factor was 2.76 in 2015. We knew that. Um, we're, we're then going to forecast a, growth, a social media growth factor going forward into the future. And you can see our target for 2016 is a 3x. And then it's going to start diminishing as we get bigger and bigger. We're going to expect the growth factor to diminish from 3 to 2.8 to 2.6 to 2.4 and 2.2 by the end of 2020. Now, the second metrics that's important for 
happy living is the conversion rate from free website, which exists today, to a premium membership, which doesn't exist today, but we plan to launch next year. And because it doesn't exist, I have no data. So I'm arbitrarily establishing a conversion target rate of 5%, which means if we have um, yeah, if we have somewhere between 9,000 and 23,000 members as we're growing in 2018, I'm sorry, let me do 2017. We start the year 2017 with 3,200 3, members. We end it with 9,000 members. If we convert the average of that size, 5% of that average, that would create 309 new premium members in 2017. Okay. So the conversion rate would be 5% of the average of our community size. And you can see those numbers would grow from 300 to 800 to, to 2010 to 4,541 by 2020. The next metric is our monthly premium membership fee. So again, we don't have a mem premium membership yet. So this is an arbitrary thing that we're planning. And our plan is to say, we're gonna charge 25 cents per month, a monthly membership fee of 25 cents per number of book titles that we have at Happy Living Publishing. And one of the things that we're gonna do is all of our premium members will get all of our books in electronic version for free. And there'll be other sweeteners that will make this, uh, we hope a very, very valuable um, membership. But so if we now we've got we've got a monthly fees plan, it's based on 25 cents per title. And so you can see the the first year that we would implement this, we'd had four titles. So it'd be a dollar per month. The following year, we'd have six titles would be a buck and a half. But anybody who buys in in 2017, they're locked in for life at a dollar. And you can see how this would grow based on the number of titles that we have in our library. The next important metric is the book publishing rate. And uh, we feel pretty comfortable that we can publish uh, two books, two new titles to the library every year. Again, both books that I'll be writing myself and books that we'll be publishing from other people. Uh, just in 2016, we've published two of, of our own. And we've also got two right now that we're working on. So we may very well end up with four uh, books by the end of of 2016. So I think a growth rate of two titles per year, I feel very comfortable with. Book formats is another metric. So as I mentioned before, uh, formats, yeah, that's this row here, 26. When we start year two, year one rather, we had two titles, two formats, paperback and ebook. By next year, we plan to have, this should actually be 13. Um, I'll change that later. We're going to have four books and we plan to have all of them in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. And we're testing one out in Spanish. And then by year three, we plan to have all our titles in all four formats for the remaining remainder of this 2020 plan. And then we'll look to going into different languages as we get into 2021. So that's the book formats. The next metric is the book buying rate. And what this is, is the percentage of our social media community buying e each book title. And so the book buying rate, as it stands, uh, I updated it in August. Uh, what this means is 4.23% of our total community, which is about 2,000 people, are buying each of our books. And so that translates into about 90, this is what we know. We've got 92 books um, that we sold for each title. And that's how we translate that into this, into this 4.23% number. So that's the book buying rate. Then the next one is the growth of the book buying rate. And so we expect that we can do better next year at converting members into website members into book readers and so we arbitrarily set five percent annual growth so we expect our book buying rate to go from 
4.23% of our community to 4.44% in 2017 to 4.66% in 2018, et cetera. The next um, metric is ad revenue per member. So again, we can come down and we know what our ad revenue was um, in 2015 and we can start and so therefore we can develop the ad revenue per member based on doing the, the math between what we actually created in ad revenue divided by the number of members that we have and then again we're going to establish a growth rate of ad revenue per member of an arbitrary five percent so in 2016 we're planning about 11 cents per member in 2017, that would grow to 12 cents and 13 cents. And you can see this, none of this is really that significant, but it's still a part of our plan and we can track it. And then uh, the final metric is uh, speaking revenue. We really have not emphasized speaking revenue. Uh, in 2016, we had a couple hundred dollars. I'm just gonna plan on doubling that every year. And again, if you look at our business plan here, the Ad affiliate revenue is very, very minor, and the speaking revenue is very, very minor. Uh, the things that we're most excited about are, are the book revenues and the website revenues. So that's our discussion on metrics. The next thing to think about in terms of, of building a business plan is organizing your spreadsheet. And so if we look at this spreadsheet that we've developed here, um, we have both rows going top to bottom and I'm sorry, rows going side to side and columns going top to bottom. So our rows are organized around the four big things, website revenue, book royalties, ad affiliate revenue, and speaking revenue. And then with each, within each of those groups, we just simply have to think what are the, what are the, what's the information that we want to be tracking? So we're going to be tracking the size of our free social media community for our website, our growth factor. And as we start off, our growth factor is going to be forecasts, but over, over the years, they'll turn from forecast to actual. So we can track, are we on target? Are we ahead of target? Are we behind target? Then it also includes uh, premium members. So we can start to track premium members once we have created a premium membership. Two annual members, and this is exciting because um, if we have 309 members at the end of 2017, we can track not only how many we have, but how many we're adding. So what's the what's the uh, vibrancy of the business? Are we getting a lot new a lot of new members? Is that where our growth is coming from? We can uh, calculate the conversion rate, and over time we'll be able to see are we ahead of or behind this version rate. That, that conversion rate that right now is an arbitrarily assigned number. Uh, we have our our monthly fees. And then, um, of course, we can also introduce website products. We haven't talked about yet. Um, and we can calculate monthly premium subscription revenue now. So once we know how many members we have and what the fees are, we can start to calculate the premium subscription revenue for a forecast. And then again, uh, we can track it against the forecast. We can also track the, so that's the monthly revenue. And then we can track the yearly subscription revenue. So this is, uh, looks bigger than it is, $3,000 to $12,000 to $41,000 to one hundred and seventeen, And then the yearly product revenues that we started introducing in 2017. Uh, and you can see those growth rates. And now we've got total yearly website revenue of five grand to 17 to 57 to 164. That's to go from a hobby to a real business that I'm excited about. We continue down the rows and we get the book royalties. Now the things that are important here are book titles, which we've talked about, the growth rate of book titles, formats in our library, calculated community size, so here what I've done in the, in the calculation is I've taken the average of the community size from the end of the previous year to the end of the existing year because members will be coming in all throughout the year. 
So if I'm going to end, if we come up here, we're going to end the year with 3,249 members. We won't have those members to be buying books all through the year. They're growing throughout the year. So I'm taking an average of that community size, and that's what this calculated community size is. And we have a book buying rate that will go from a forecast to an actual as we as we get the data and it comes in and um, the book buying growth rate, which I mentioned, which we hope to get 5% better every year. Then we can calculate the annual sales per format. So again, that started out as, a, as an actual calculation based on uh, performance through August 31st and then became a forecast as we move into the future. And you can see the numbers go up very nicely as our community size. This is based on our community size and our book buying rate. Uh, that'll be the annual sales per format. And then finally, the book profit per format. Again, we're right now calculated at $5 or so, uh, but our plan is to hold that number at about $3 per format. And therefore we end up with our annual book revenue of about $2,000 planned for 2016. Uh, which we have about $1,200 in right now. So we're kind of pretty much on track for that. And then look at the growth rates. Very exciting. 400% uh, for... Finally, the ad affiliate revenue, it's nothing very exciting. Um, we're not counting much on it for our business plan, but we want to start to track it. And we do hope to energize it as we learn more and more about how we can build uh, ad revenue and or affiliate partnership revenue. Uh, but for now, we're just tracking the ad revenue per member um, and then the actual ad annual ad affiliate revenue generated. And again, it's, it's small numbers, so not very important for our business plan. It might be very important for yours. And speaking revenue is pretty straightforward. Um, we just have annual speaking revenue that we're tracking. So that's all the, the rows that we're using for our business plan. Then you have the columns. So if we go back to columns, we go up to the top. The first column A is just to name each of our rows. Column B is dedicated mostly to conversion rates, growth rates, and other descriptions. So those rates get put in column B, so then they can be leveraged as we um, – do forecasting and you'll see when we get to our our calculated fields how we're leveraging those conversion rates and growth rates columns c and d are in our cases historical data uh, 2014 and 2015 is done we know what happened at least we know what happened in some places and that's where we built that as a part of our business plan uh, you may have more historical data you may have less uh, fact is you simply have what you have and you should build that into your plan. Going forward, you're going to have a lot more data because now you're going to be tracking the important elements of your business uh, in this forecasted plan. 2016, uh, or the next column E, is our current year. And our current year is both an actual and a forecast at the same time. So we can, we can calculate where we are in terms of our community size like we know we had 1,978 members as of August 31st, and we can use that information um, to forecast where we think we're going to end up at the end of the year. The 2016 is kind of a hybrid year. Some of the things we know for certain, some of the things we're forecasting, but we're forecasting it with quite a bit of knowledge because we have eight months into the year that we're using to say this is where we're going to end up at the end of the year. And then the next part of our our columns are our true forecast. So, and I've broken it down into a five-year forecast, 2016, um, which is a partial forecast, and then four more years, which is total forecast. We have no idea um, what's going to happen in 2017. We can just start to build a plan around uh, our assets and around our metrics and, and targets. Uh, but so 2017, 18, 19, and 20 is all based on pure forecasting, and I'll show you the calculated fields that did that. And that also gives me a short, fo shorter focus, right? I'm, I've got a 10-year plan, but I really want to focus on that first five years 
learn what we're doing at Happy Living, learn how all this stuff works, start to really track the metrics that are important to the business, see if we're on target or off target and make adjustments and work hard to, to get 2016 numbers and then 2017 numbers and just see if we can watch this business plan grow as we've laid it out. And then for aspirational purposes, I'm, I'm gonna expand the plan and grow the next five years and just take a look and see if we were on this trajectory through 2020, where would we end up in 2025? And I'll come back to that in a minute. So that's the columns. Um, and then the, the next thing are the different kind of cell inputs. So um, the first type of cell inputs are just simply the names, right? And so website revenue is a name for cell 7A. Social com media community free is the name for cell 8A and so on and so forth. So just names. The second type are historical data. And for purposes of, of this business plan, and I'm going to give this to you as a template, um, all the gray fields are historical data, a place where you can input all known historical data from previous years. Then the next type of cell inputs are what I call arbitrary target fields, and I made those in blue. So these are anything that's in blue. These are things that we don't have history on and I'm just taking my best educated guess or you can call it a hope um, or a plan, however you want to define it. I don't know what our conversion rate is going to be. So I'm going to set an arbitrary goal of 5%. I'm going to set an arbitrary monthly fees of 25 cents per title. That may change depending on if anybody's willing to pay a dollar in 2017, or maybe they think a dollar is really inexpensive. So my arbitrary fields, I'm going to, I'm setting a, a standard for them. And then I'm going to watch and see what happens and adjust them accordingly. Once I start to learn more. So those are arbitrary target fields. And then the, the green fields are the calculated fields. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to show you uh, what I provided for you here in this in this spreadsheet or this template that you're going to get. So combined revenue, uh, if I go up to the very top, combined, combined revenue plan, every green field you'll see as I get my cursor over the field, it has um, a formula in it. And I've got a, a matching Excel, or I'm, I'm sorry, a matching Word document, a PDF that I'll give you that has all of this information typed out. So in the case of combined revenue actual, it's the, it's the combination of my total yearly website revenue, annual book revenue, annual ad affiliate revenue, and annual speaking revenue. So that's a formula. And you can see that formula carries over year after year after year after year. Okay. The social media community free is also a formula and it's a formula that's based on the previous years community size times the forecasted growth factor and so all these green fields are calculated as a formula and this formula is included in the excel spreadsheet for you to use and change according to your own needs and your own business plan but it's also in a matching word document with all the fields and the formulas right there in front of you. So that's our calculated fields. The final thing I want to talk to you about is in the template that I'm going to be providing you, we have two, two worksheets. One is called down the bottom here. You see your template and the other is the original template. But the idea here is your template, you can adjust for your own purposes, make it your plan. Obviously, you're not going to, it's not going to be the same as Happy Living's plan. But the original template is locked down. Um, the password is happy, one, two, three, four. You can unlock it if you choose to. But what I wanted to do here is let you work on your template and make changes, but always be able to go back to the original and see what was there so you don't lose um, you don't lose the template. You don't lose something if you 
um, make a mistake and delete something on accident or set up a formula incorrectly, you can always go back to the original and then re go from there. Uh, so that's, that's the plan. And now let's come back. So that's the layout for, for this forecasting, uh, revenue forecasting. And let's look at the impact of it because after all, that's what this uh, is really about. It's about creating excitement for a business. It's about creating excitement for others that might want to participate in your business, whether it's in outside investors or maybe it's employees that you'd look to be hiring. As your, and, it, and it's really about crew and say, you know what? Right now, as, as we're slugging through growing happy living, uh, if we achieve our goal of going from $584 in revenue in 2015 to, to hitting over 2000 dollars in revenue for 2016 and remember i'm a guy that just sold a business for 42 million dollars so you can imagine i'm not that excited about 2338 dollars in revenue except i really am excited about it because if i can hit those metrics and and if i go back to wayne dyer's thing what this means is we're we're starting to get our message out our message is valuable to others and the more people we can help the revenue will come and now i know and the folks that are working with me at Happy Living know what metrics, what values are important. And we have a, a plan in place that we can see how 2016 comes together. We can adjust according to what we've learned. And maybe we, we come back and say, our goal for 2017 is not gonna be 2.8 growth factor. It's gonna be more or it's gonna be less based on what we actually accomplished in 2016. I might come down and adjust our goal for book titles is not going to be four because frankly, we already have four, two done, two underway that are planned to be finished by the end of 2016, first part of 2017. And I've got two more in my head. So I really think I'm going to have six by the end of 2017. Um, and so I can adjust my plan accordingly. And as I adjust 2017, obviously it's going to adjust 2018, 2019, and 2020 as well. So we're starting to learn. All saying all of that, I get very excited about $2,338 and then $15,993 because what that means is I'm growing my community size to significant levels to 124,000 people by the end of 2020. I'm growing our messaging with our with our blog posts and we're getting important, valuable information in people's hands that they're even willing to pay for, that we're developing our book library. And again, getting that word out, um, uh, books that are bringing value to people that they're willing to spend their hard earned money on. And I can start to track it and end up over the course of time, Metrics that we've laid out in this business plan. Let's just look at the top line again. Twenty-three hundred dollars. Uh, who cares? Fifteen thousand dollars. Still don't care. Seventy-four thousand dollars. It's starting to be something real. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Very real. Over seven hundred thousand. Now you can just play the game and look out. Look at these numbers. Those are based on the metrics that we have in place. None of which look overly aggressive to me, all of which is something I believe we can certainly do in 2016, 2017, and 2018. And if we do that, there's no reason why we cannot continue on that path in 2019 and in the years to follow. And then it becomes a very, very serious business. So that's the reason you want to have a good forecast. Let me return to just wrap things up. Um, this whole idea of creating a, a simple business forecasting system for entrepreneurs really came about, um, was not planned. I was at a conference and I was working on my concept of turning inspiration into action, uh, hosting a small talk at the World Domination Summit in Portland, Oregon. And after we were done with our talk about turning conference inspiration into action, 
somebody, one of the entrepreneurs there asked me if I had any knowledge on how to develop a business forecasting plan. And I said, well, it just so happens I've been putting one together for Happy Living. Would you like to see it? And they loved it. If I'm being honest with you, they were more excited about my business forecasting than they were about uh, my comments on turning inspiration into action. And so I decided, why don't I go ahead and put something together into a program that we can share with other entrepreneurs. It's 100% free right now. Um, I'd like to give it to you and let you use it. But I would also like to get input from you. I'd like us to become a, a community of entrepreneurs that's working on developing a forecasting system that works for, for others. I want you to ask questions um, directly of me. I want you to work with the system, make suggestions and offer feedback. In other words, make this your system. And what we'll do is just keep adjusting the, the master based on the collective intelligence of our community. And we'll continually improve the system and create best practices that can be shared by all. So I invite you to be a partner with me in designing this simple business forecasting system for entrepreneurs, starting with what I've put together for you and then giving me your inputs and feedback so we can make it ours. And that's it. I really, really appreciate your time. I know it's very difficult to take time out of a busy day, especially for entrepreneurs, especially for entrepreneurs early in their, uh, in their business. So thank you. Um, you can reach me at my email address, matt at happyliving.com. I hope the system works for you. And I look forward to talking with you or emailing uh, with you as you start using it. Thank you very much. I wish you a very, very happy day. Bye.